Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Archbishop Curley High School at MIAA Conference matchup. The Cavaliers visiting the Friars. We pick up a little bit through the action. Still on the top of the first inning. A little bit of technical difficulty to start. Sorry about that, but one out of man on first and one nothing for the Cavaliers. Out with a shot toward right field. It'll drift foul. One from Carson Eddy. A breaking ball for a called strike. Friars coming into this one. This game, RA 1 2 against MSJ, but they're in a little bit of a hole here. RA down 1 0. Two strike pitch, a breaking ball for a called strike three. Two outs, bottom of top of the first. Two down for Carson Eddy. First pitch, a fastball called strike on the outside corner. Up is Theo Laughlin, the five hitter. The 0 1 pitch, a ball outside. The Friars come in at 2 and 3, were swept to start the season against Calvert Hall. It took the first two games from MSJ, the third game still yet to be played. Meanwhile, Spalding swept Loyola to start their season. They did, and Spalding can really put on the runs too. They, early in the season when they were playing out of conference games, they were really piling on the runs. One, two, up high. So he's three, one, rather. Been a command issue early for Carson. You've seen a lot of balls that he's kept up high. That one he flips over for a strike and he drives the count full. Three two runner goes from first and that one a ball down low. Actually, now the count is moved to three and two. Cruz picks up the stolen base. Right after game, Luna, right after he gets walked, he steals the base. Runner is going position now. Now a full count pitch up high, and he will walk. Second walk, and he has given up in this first inning. and he has to find a way to get that third out without giving up any more runs so that they can keep the damage to a minimum. Jack McNally, the backstop with a runner in scoring position. Eddie flips over a breaking ball for a strike. Parks will hold Cruz at second base. Now he'll back off. A big cut and a miss. Counts 0 and 2. We'll see how Carson Eddy works now ahead in the count. He's been behind a lot early, but now he has a chance to put a batter away. 
He hopefully can collect another strike. He already has one looking so far. Yo to a breaking ball. McNally spits on it. Count goes to one and two. That one tipped and held on to by Derek Poole. So Carson Eddy does escape, just allowing one. But the Friars will have to work from behind against the elite Jake Yeager. We'll see him next. Back here for the bottom of the first and on the mound for the Cavaliers is going to be Jake Yeager. Yeager, one of the many high velocity pitchers on this team. He's amongst four or five and the Friars are seeing the best of that group the Cavaliers have today. Yeager, Maryland baseball commit. Multiple scouts in attendance today. I'd say about six or seven back there. Padres, Reds, Red Sox, Orioles, and a few others as well. First pitch from Jaeger down low. Ceiling takes a strike. He's been a staple at the top of the lineup so far for this Friars squad. Although the team as a whole still hasn't found their offensive peak quite yet. Still early in the season. As Jaeger flips in a pretty breaking ball for a strike. He's ahead one and two. Fastball up high. Popped up. In comes the first baseman. He will make the catch in foul territory. 
Drew Emmerich records out number one. Yeah, for a leadoff hitter, primarily you're you're looking for a person to get on base to start out and get some energy started, but unfortunately it just didn't happen there. Kevin Gedicke, a hack at a first pitch fastball for a strike. Fastball outside corner and he's up 0-2. So getting ahead quickly is Jaeger. He now has two strikes on Gedicke. Breaking ball, grounded left side. Takes a short hop on the third baseman, but he goes over to first to record the out. Nice job by Chase Taylor sticking with it through that hop. And two quick outs. The yeah, Curly's baseball field has some unexpected hops. I was watching the uh, pregame warm ups. And there were some unexpected hops that people were surprised about fielding. He steps pool. He pops it over our heads and out of play. Pool's been the best hitter on this Friar squad so far. Recorded three homers against MSJ, and including a grand slam, and he really had all the offensive firepower in that game for the Friars. Called strike and Jaeger once again puts a curly batter in a two strike count. Pull behind 0 and 2. Jaeger's 0 2, a little bit down. One, two to pull, a fastball, hard hit to the third baseman, Taylor, he bobbles it. He will fire high and way over the head of the first baseman. Pool will stick at first. A.J. Polkary will courtesy run for the catcher, Pool. And in steps Hunter Lehew. He's hitting cleanup today. And again, like I said, this baseball field really has some unexpected bumps to it. And third baseman bobbled it, and he tried to just chuck it out of his glove, and it just turned into a throwing error. Lehew, a Frostburg State commit. A big hack and a first pitch fastball. Hey, see you. Give me a couple. Well, Curry takes his lead from first. And Leahy waves through another one. Eager's been very efficient in this one. He's thrown very few balls, and he's... 0 2, getting batters down 0 2 to three straight batters. Pokeri goes with a great jump, and Lakehu takes outside for a ball. Pokeri had a running start. Yet, Yeager looked like he wasn't even phased by it. He just looked like he didn't care. One, two from Jaeger. Polkari still dancing from second. A breaking ball, and he soars up. Hunter Lehu. So the error does not come back to hurt Jake Jaeger. He gets out of it scoreless as we head to the second inning.
Top of the second. One nothing Cavs. Sam Houchins up to the plate. Carsonetti looking to find some command after a little bit of first inning trouble. Still only gave up one. His first pitch, a breaking ball in the dirt. That fastball grounded foul. Just snuck outside the third base bag. Carsonetti and the defense has, had a, has to find a way to put a zero on the scoreboard for the second inning or else they might find themselves in trouble by not scoring the first. Eddie's one one, a ground ball right back to him. Parks has got a charge, he's got to get rid of it quickly, and he does. Oh, but not in time. Houchins runs it out, an infield single. A bang bang play at first base. Eddie got in trouble in that first inning. Have to go to the stretch right away, right away out of the windup. We'll see how he reacts to the runner on early in the second inning. First pitch, outside corner for a strike. Breaking ball. He did not swing. Count is even at 101. Pruitt holding Houchins on at first. He takes off and slapped out of play by Chase Taylor, today's third baseman for the Cavs. Not as big as a jump as AJ's stolen base was, but still could have possibly been safe. Unfortunately, a foul ball just ruined it. Eddie ahead now, one and two. He tired two Cavs batters by the strikeout in the first inning, looking to pick up number three here. His one, two in the dirt. That one got about 57 feet pull. Didn't really even have to get down and block it. Took enough of a kick right up to him. Counting even at two and two. That one up high and the count runs full. We'll see if they put Houchins in motion. The count. At three and two. Houchins inching off first base. He's held by Jake Pruitt. There he goes. That one lined down the right field line. Right to Owen Chapro. He will not have enough time to fire back the first base. But an out for Carsonetti. And that's a great way to keep, keep the runner at first Sam Houchins because he was he had that stolen base and luckily there was a fly ball and almost doubled him off but still good his first pitch Breaking ball, he caught the outside corner on Carson Merritt, today's nine hitter. Merritt in right field. One pitch, but first Eddie will check 
over on Houchins. And I don't know if you uh, know this or not, but Carson Merritt's one of AJ's friends, and uh, I actually know him somewhat. So, one of the few I know on opponents' teams. Houchins takes off, and he is out at second base, a absolute strike from Poole. That was an absolute dime. Houchins caught stealing in a second out. Derek Poole threw it right on the money and no need for a glove movement from Austin Ceiling. Merritt squares the button, pulls back. The pitch was a ball. So Carson Eddy in danger of walking his third. It's three one count. Puts over a strike, runs it full. As you were mentoring, mentioning, there are a lot of those friend connections throughout the entire MIAA, a bunch of kids know each other. Curly, Cavard Hall, Loyola, Spalding, NSJ, all those schools. That one sent deep out to center field. Gedeke racing back and he makes the catch right in front of the wall. So, just took three batters to record three outs. This inning for Carson Eddy, a bit smoother of sailing as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Back here for the bottom of the second. Jaeger back out after a smooth first inning. He'll face Owen Chapro to lead off the bottom of the second. Jaeger's first pitch, a strike. Yeager's gotten all five batters in a two strike count so far and that's part of the reason why he's as good as he is, the ability to get ahead and work ahead. Yeager's two strike pitch, Chapo flails one out to right field and that will get down for a base hit. So a good piece of two strike hitting is Chapo pushes one out beyond the second baseman and he will get on to lead off the second inning. Sometimes all you need is a little poke of the bat to get it over second baseman's glove. Check on Chapro. He's back easily. Yeager's first pitch to Ritter, a big hack. With the Yeager's 
with Jaeger's uh, velocity, he's been able to get a lot of first pitch strikes too to almost to majority of the batters. And once again, an 0-2 count. Every batter is faced at one point in the at bat, either 0-2 or 1-2. And, and the trend continues. A second check on Chapro, and Chapro will get up and get to second base. So now they'll look to Ritter just to at least get that runner to third and put one out there. Same thing that happened the uh, Friars in the first inning happens now to the Cavaliers. And now a runner in scoring position. Hopefully Elijah Ritter can do something to even the game back up. Count still 0-2. Jaeger delivers up high. Riddle will take time. Get out, adjust the batting gloves, and he'll step back in. Chaparro leading off the second base. He's held by the shortstop, Braden Martin, and a called strike three on Ritter. So Ritter unable to move Chaparro to third, and Soron will step in with one out, and a man still in scoring position. Jaeger's first pitch, a strike at the knees. I think also too, Spalding, along with very few schools, have uh, like the MLB does with the pitch comms. Sarone hacks this one out of play, and another two-strike count. Jaeger's efficiency is clearly showing just two strikes every batter this inning. You can see Jaeger take a peek down at the wrist. That is to see what the catcher calls on their pitch comm device. Cerrone pops this one out toward left field. That's a tough play for Taylor racing back. And it won't matter because it's out of play on top of the batting cage. Still one and two on Cerrone. Chaparro now with a bit bigger of a lead. And Cerrone takes a call to strike three on the outside corner. So after Chaparro got the second, with none out, two straight, backwards K's, and now there are two outs for Parks. First pitch outside. That may be the first batter that Jaeger started with a ball. May have been one more other than this, but he's been working head early. One out of Parks up high. The outfield shifted heavily toward right with the fireball throwing Jaeger on the mound. Parks pushes one out toward shortstop, but it hangs up. Enough for Brie Martin to record out number three, so the Friars spoil an opportunity. We will see Carstetti come back out for the top of the third. It's one nothing Cavs.
back for the top of the third and back to the top of the order are the Spalding Cavaliers. It'll be Braden Martin, the shortstop, stepping in. Cavs have flipped the lineup after just two innings. We'll see Braden Martin for a second time. That one outside for a ball. Martin takes a strike on the outside corner. Fouls that one straight back into the screen. And now Carson Eddy ahead. We'll see what he goes to for the put away pitch here. Back out of that wind up. He lays off, two and two. Two and two, Eddie flips over a breaking ball at his line and caught by Lake Hugh at third base. Even on the outs, the Cavs putting together some good contact off of Carson Eddie early. Yeah, it was that was a laser off the bat to third base and a quick reaction for for Lakeview. First pitch breaker in for a strike. Carson Eddie's worked well with the breaking ball early. Cruz Luna in for at bat number two. He walked in solo base in the first, did not come around to score. He'll take one up high there, two and one. Outside corner for a strike and Eddie runs the count back even done a better job of throwing strikes in innings number two and three. Has settled in a little bit. That one. Missed on the breaking ball. Poole stuck it. May have been strike three. But it clanked off the glove and the count runs full. This is twice that's happened to Cruz Luna. And so far in the first inning, he's had a 3-2 count. And here he has a 3-2 count. And he rings up Luna on a full count, and he's retired the first two of inning number three. That'll push in Brennan Insko, Cavs second baseman. He holds the RBI in the first inning for the Cavs on that sack flying. Carstetti flips over another pretty looking breaking ball, strike one. is two and one. Carstetti working quickly. The two and one popped up, drifting out of play. Seems like the majority of the batters there they have um gotten the full uh the full counts or even counts, two two to three two and He's still efficient. Two and two. Just missed with the breaking ball. He wanted it, but instead the count runs full. Three and two. Inside, ball four. Two out walk for Insko. 
through Emrick. He'll ground one up the middle, ranging his ceiling. He will fire the first in time. So the two out walk harmless as he gets the next batter on one pitch. And we will head to the bottom of the third. The Friars still looking to scratch across the scoreboard. Bottom of the third, Jaeger out for inning number three. Jake Pruitt will lead it off. Friars, one hit so far. Beautiful day for some baseball, sun's out about 61, 62 degrees shortly after the partial solar eclipse. Pruitt takes strike one. It was actually a full solar eclipse uh, during, or actually it may have been a bit before the Cleveland Guardians game. They were in that direct path, so there was a point in time where it was obstructed uh, just leading up to the game. Pruitt grounds this one to short. In is Martin, buddy. Pulls him off the bag. So Pruitt reaches on the air by Braden Martin. A relatively routine play, and Martin just pulled the throw. Yeah, going back to that solar eclipse, I think that's why they delayed the game a little bit. They'd have to delay it so they wouldn't be playing in the dark. Ceiling swings through a first pitch breaking bar. Remember the last one in 2017 that was once again a partial solar eclipse in the area. Saw a lot of players with the glasses out on the field pregame taking a gander upward. There are even some moments with the clouds where you could kind of see the outlines because the sun wasn't shining directly up so you could look up actually without those glasses. Ceiling behind 0-2. He'll foul that one back. Jaeger is 0-2. Ceiling waves through a fastball. Strikeout number four for Jake Jaeger. Four of seven outs have come the by the way of the K early in this one.
Yeah, I think you found someone straight back. Yeah, with his fastball, with his high velocity, he's, he's able to bring a whole bunch of first pitch strikes to majority of the batters. Gedeke, another one straight back. That one caught a piece of Jack McNally. Gedeke, right on it, just has to make a bit of an adjustment. That entire infield and outfield are shifted toward that right side. Jaeger looking to roll up a double play ball. O2 to Gedeke, a breaking ball that he found straight back. Gedeke's caught a piece of both the breaking ball and the fastball. The O2 once again, another foul ball. Kevin Gedeke is trying to time up the fastball, but it and the curveball, and he has a pretty good mix of his pitches. The O2 Gedeke goes chasing up high. Strikeout number five for Jaeger. Jaeger. Big senior, as I mentioned earlier, committed to the University of Maryland. Poole takes a strike. Quickly, 0 and 2, Jaeger yet to throw a ball this inning going right at these curly hitters. And that's just impressive not to throw a ball and just dart the fastball past both Austin Sealing and Kevin Gedeke. That one up high. It's one and two. One and two, pull, pulls that one a long ways. Count on remain one and two. Pull spits on a good breaking ball, and the count goes even. Pulls the guy you one up with these men on. He has a rocket of a bat. If he makes good contact, he can sail one out. And he waves at a breaking ball. Had him out in front. And Jaeger strikes out number seven on the day. No runs, no hits. One left on base for the Friars as we head to the top of the fourth.
Back out is Eddie for inning number four of work. And back out is Theo Laughlin, the five hitter. One plate appearance, no at bat save for Laughlin. He walked in at bat number one. And he'll pop this one up to the right side of the infield on the first pitch. In comes Pruitt on the infield grass, and he makes the catch. So one pitch, one out. Picked up where he left off on in the third inning. First pitch strike, poured in by Eddie. Jack McNally takes low. Almost hit McNally. That pitch came in high and in. That one in the dirt, it's two and one. Actually three and one rather, excuse me. Eddie's gone clean the last two innings. Hasn't walked a batter since the first, but he walks one here. Jack McNally's on with one out. And they'll run for McNally with Michael Thompson. Sam Houch is in. Eddie will check over on Thompson. Another pick off. I don't even know what just happened. Looks like Eddie may not have been paying attention. Throw may have been wide. Well, I honestly can't tell you. But two pickoffs and no outs recorded. Two pickoff attempts, that is. This is the first pitch from Eddie. Does miss to Houchins. Thompson inching off, and that one a strike. <laughs> Another check over. Heckled a bit from the Cavs dugout. A good throw back to Carson and Eddie after the pickoff attempt. Michael Thompson still inching off as Houchin chases up high for that one. It is one and two. Breaking ball down low. <laughs> no, 
another throw over. Carson, he's kept runners close today. He's been pretty close for multiple pickoff attempts. Yeah, I think that was the third one for this at bat. He'll go to the plate now on two and two, and Houston's fouls it straight back. There goes Thompson, that one grounded. Right to our right. And foul. Another foul ball by Houchin, so a good battle here between Carsonetti and Sam Houchins. Carsonetti trying to find that put away pitch. Houchins keeps on fouling him off. Another pick off by Carson and he's back in safely. The 2-2 again, there goes Thompson, it's down low, pool fires the second base and he is safe under the tag. That one didn't look close. It looks like he, that call was seemingly totally blown. Thompson just started to slide and Parks tagged him in the chest. Yeah, that did look wrong. I thought Poole had him. <laughs> Now a 3-2, down low. Now the Cavaliers have first and second. With only one out. Now, Carson, he finds himself in a bit of trouble once again. See if he can work out of it. First and second, one out. First pitch, a double play ball. Six, four. He's out at first, and they turn the double play. On to Pruitt for the three. Maybe a little bit of a makeup call there, but goes the Friars' way. And the Friars rolled up six, four, three to end the top of the fourth inning. So we will go to the bottom of the fourth with the Friars still looking at scratch across the scoreboard.
Bottom four, one nothing Cavaliers. Curley will open the inning with the cleanup hitter Hunter Lakehu at the plate. Lakehu struck out swinging his first time around. First pitch from Yeager. Lakehu grounds it hard to the right side, but right there and on to first is the second baseman, Brennan Insko. One pitch, one out. Can't get any simpler than that. <coughs> Chapro in at the plate holds the only Friars hit so far. That single to right field that he snuck over the outstretched glove of Insko. Chapro takes one at the knees. O2 from Jaeger. Chapro lines that one out to right field, but right to the right fielder. Carson Merritt there to record the second out. So Schaffer with probably the best two pieces of hitting the Friars have had today out of that five hole. One hit to come from it. First pitch to Ritter. A strike. Eger spikes that one. About a 57 foot fastball. Jaeger struck out six today. He's through three and two thirds of clean baseball and he's one more strike away from going four scoreless. One and two to Elijah Ritter, today's designated hitter. Got a piece of it. He'll stay alive and see another one. Yeah, so far in this game, for every inning, Jaeger's pitched to four batters. Every inning, and the efficiency is on another level. Two strike pitch. Ritter swings and misses at a breaking ball, so Jaeger goes the minimum in the fourth inning. He is on a roll as we head to the top of the fifth inning. The Cavs lead 1-0.
top of the fifth, the Cavs will lead off with the nine hitter Carson Merritt patrolling right field today for the Cavaliers. Carson Eddie back out there for inning number five of work and a first pitch strike. Our breaking ball fell back. And both pitchers are going pretty far into this game because there's only been run, one run scored between both teams and very few hits. 0-2. Oh that one just missed. One and two to Merritt. A back foot breaking ball doesn't get the chase. Count is even. Two and two. A call to strike three on the outside corner. Eddie's fourth strikeout of the day. And the order will turn over for the Cavs. Braden Martin up for his third at bat. As odd as it sounds, the Cavaliers with only two hits through this one. Carson Eddie's walked five, struck out four, but only allowed two hits. That one flied out of play on the left side. Yeah, I think there's only been three hits in com combination between Cavaliers and Friars. Yeah, just one from Curley and two from Spalding. Spalding does have the advantage on the scoreboard. Two and one count. Martin squares the button, pulls back, taking ball three. Player Lakehew came running in from third base. And ball four to Braden Martin. Walk number six for Carsonetti on the day. First pitch and outside corner strike to Brendan Insko. Actually, it's Cruz Luna, rather, the two hitter in the DH. Martin on first. Spalling is attempted two stolen bases today. They were caught once. They, in quotation marks, stole a base. Although he seemed to be out by about three feet. Sort of de debatable, but we still got the double play. Fires got the double play right after. Eddie will check on Martin. That one driven deep out to left field, tracing Sarone back. And Sarone runs the route and makes the catch for route number two. Just like the Cavaliers' defense on that play, it seemed like Sarone was shifted, the entire outfield was shifted to the right and still looks to be. Hey, 
Brennan Insko will step in in a big spot for the Cavs. Trying to add some insurance. There goes Martin. Pulls throw to second, and it is high. Park seemed to think he got a tag on the foot. But the argument to no avail. Martin steals second base. RP did make a great attempt to get him while kind of an offline throw from Derek Poole. Pretty breaking ball to get Ensco waving. One one. He lays off a breaking ball to get ahead in the count. Two and one. That one chopped the short. Ceiling in front of it fires the first. And Carson Eddy with five innings of one run baseball. He's gone scoreless the last four. Just that first inning blemish. But the Friars still have work to do on the offensive end. Still nothing on the scoreboard for them. They'll look to scratch across in the bottom of the fifth inning. Bottom of the fifth. Jaeger back out for his fifth inning of work. Still going strong. He's through a very solid four innings. No walks and just one hit. That hit coming from Owen Chapro. And up is Anthony Cerrone to lead off this bottom of the fifth inning and he takes ball one. There's been very few times where Yeager has started off with a ball. He's just been insane with the amount of strikes being thrown. Thrown, chops that one down the first baseline. Yeager will take it and flip it for an easy first out. He hit a Ryan Parks in. He bloops that one over Jaeger's head. That is going to be a tough play, and Parks runs it out, and he will go to second. Parks will check up there, and the Friars have a man in scoring position with one out.
That ball just found no man's land. Right over the head of Jaeger, he thought it looked like the shortstop Braden Martin would come in for it, but he didn't. Jaeger had to rush back for it, and the ball kind of died right on that grass. So now a big spot for Jake Pro to see. Swings through a first pitch, gets a piece of it in the mitt of McNally. A big spot for the sophomore. That one low. Pruitt's taking the approach against Jaeger. No leg kick, keeps it planted, just a little mini load with that lower half. And that's what you gotta do. You can generate power from the velocity coming in and the bat making good contact itself. You just gotta focus on making that contact. Pruitt. Did not go. It's two and one. Jake Pruitt ahead in the count. A duck on the pond, as they'd say. Parks out on second base. Two and one. Pruitt grounds that one to shortstop, and it's through Miller. Excuse me, it's through Martin at shortstop. Braden Martin, his second error of the day, and the Friars have first and second. So Pruitt has reached twice on E6s. Something about that Jake Pruitt spin that Braden, Mil Braden Martin just cannot figure out. Mound visit now. And now this is the perfect opportunity with one out. Burns on first and second to score. They'll send on Colin Roach the sophomore, the recent call up for this varsity squad. Roach would be the go ahead run on first base. Austin sealing up to the plate. Hitless in today's game. Ceiling takes a breaking ball in the dirt. A big opportunity for the Friars. They flip the lineup over and two men out there. The 1 0 to Ceiling. Hager kicks and deals. A breaking ball that he takes. Two good takes from Ceiling to start this at bat. Now man will come out to run for Ryan Parks. It's cooled off here a bit at Archbishop Curley High School. A breeze blowing through our first base side box. Ceiling fouls that one back with an aggressive hack. I don't know if it's just me, but that outfield seems like it's been the most shifted than it's ever been. But I really don't know, understand why they shifted on a right handed batter that far. Ceiling. We'll pop that one straight up, a home run in a silo. A pop out to the first baseman at Curley. And 
And now Kevin Gadicki. Two outs, a man out at second, as well as one at first. You gotta assume on any single to the outfield you're setting that runner. You're not gonna have very many chances off a guy like Jaeger and you gotta take the chance if you have it. Yeah, and Curley does have some speed on the base path, so they can do some damage when they're running. Gadicki, ground ball to the shortstop, Martin. He flips his second and it's in time, so Jaeger escapes and he's through five scoreless innings as we head to the top of the sixth. Inning number six in this pitcher's duel matchup. Carson Eddy exits. His line will close. And it was a strong day for Carson Eddy. Five innings, four strikeouts, the one blemish, and the thing that raised a little bit of a question mark, six walks, but they only allowed two hits and one earned run. So a strong day for Carson Eddy, although an odd one. And now on is the sophomore Owen Rossi as he delivers in a first pitch strike to the cleanup hitter. That's Drew Emrich. Rossi a breaking ball. Flies it deep out to right field but foul. Check swing right back to Rossi. He will plant and throw to first base. Sophomore to sophomore. 1 3. Emmerich 0 for 3 on the day. Great start for Owen Rossi so far. Yeah. 
that one a strike. That one smoked up the middle and third hit of the day for the Cavs. It comes from Theo Laughlin. Cavs will run Jacob Ruiz in for Theo Laughlin. Put a little more speed out there with some important insurance that the Cavaliers are aiming for. with a hack on the first pitch. Rossi ahead in the count, one, two. Rossi has worked his way in as a mainstay of this. Friars, not starting rotation, but rotation of pitchers that they have, and he's been commonly on the mound in these big spots. Still one and two on the catcher, McNally. There goes Ruiz. That one poked in a, a curly hop. Puts it past Lakeview. Ruiz trucking the third. In is the throw from Polkarian. It's not in time. Michael Thompson will courtesy run once again for the catcher McNally. And we're also now in a bit of trouble, first and third with just one out. We'll see how long Thompson stays at first base, a first and third situation. Sam Houchins up to the plate, he squares the button, pulls back. I think Thompson goes pretty early in the count because they, Derek Poole might not want to throw it. Keep that runner on third. And now a mound visit from Coach Joe. He'll lay out the strategy in a bit of a tricky spot because you have speed on both corners. I probably say put the corners in.
First pitch from Rossi, and he puts down the bunt. A perfect one. Rossi will have to go to first. First pitch a strike. Chase Taylor, third baseman. It's actually Noah Vazzi oh. in for Chase Taylor pinch hitting. Excuse me. Razzie out to second base, but it hangs up long enough for Ryan Parks. But the Cavaliers do score another run, and it's now 2 0. And the Friars are still yet to scratch, scratch one across. We'll see if they can do it in the bottom of the sixth inning. Bottom of the sixth, and Jaeger out again. It's been a more than strong performance so far. He's gone five innings, seven strikeouts, no walks, and just two hits. And neither were hit really hard. Chaperos kind of leaked over to second baseman Parks found a space right in between the shortstop second baseman and pitcher. Derek Poole will lead off the bottom of the sixth inning. Takes a hack at a first pitch and fouls it out of play. Pool takes the ball down low. One to pull. Pull grounds that one to third. 
It is Noah Vazzi just entered into the game and he records the putout 5-3. And it is a clean up here like you. He takes a big hack and first pitch fastball. Yeager has done an outstanding job at working ahead. And it's shown no walks. Leahy at the knees for strike two. I mean, he's been in front 0-2 to so many batters. It's unbelievable. Oh and two and Hunter down on three pitches. The heater darted right past. Couldn't get the bat to the ball. Um Chapro to the plate. Chapro a swing and a miss. That one flying out of play, and it's 0 and 2. Win two on Chapro. Yeah, you're looking to complete six strong. And he does. What a performance by Yeager. We'll see if he comes out for the seventh, but if not, six strong innings completed by Jake Yeager. Friars still nothing across the scoreboard. And as we go to the top of the seventh inning, it's two nothing spawning. Top seven, Owen Rossi out for a second inning of work. First pitch off the plate to Michael Thompson. He is in for the nine hitter, Carson Merritt.
Soft ground ball to second base, fielded by Parkson on the first for the first out. Outside. Rossi down 3 L. And a four pitch walk. Fourth time today, a walk, a strikeout, and a fly out to left. You foul that first pitch off. side. Braden Martin has reached three or four times he's come to the plate today. Two walks and a single. He also did steal base earlier. We'll see if he goes on the move again. That one. Deep out the center field back is Gedeke. He makes the catch running into the wall. He'll toss it into the cutoff man Parks. And returning to first is Braden Martin. Two outs now for the three hitter Brennan Insko. There goes Martin on the first pitch and it's fouled away. Squared a bunt and pull nearly through that one in the right field. Pitch was a strike. So Insko now in the hole 0 and 2. Well, Ross trying to get out of the inning with only with the score still 2-0. Owen two to Insko, a breaking ball down low. Rossi steps off. Runner goes. Insko slaps that one deep out to right center field. That one is going to get down. With the runner Martin going, he will score easily. And Insko will check up at second and RBI double.
pretty sure too Brandon Insko has two RBIs letting Brandon Martin first pitch strike from Rossi that one slapped out in front of the plate and foul That one popped shallow into left field. Pokeri running in, and he makes the catch. Jaeger back out for the seventh inning. The Friars need three to stay alive. Bottom of the seventh inning. Friars need three. It'll be the designated hitter, Elijah Ritter. Leading off of that deep stance of his. Gets in the legs. And gets in that swing. It's 0-1. Ritter pops that one up. And catch not made, a foul ball. Two. Ritter pokes that one on the infield over is Braden Martin and he makes the catch all the way over at the second base position. Your shortstop was calling for it. <laughs> second base was sure waving the ball if the shortstop over the second base traveling. <laughs>
eager two outs away from completing a complete game. Outside to Sarone. That one catches the corner. That one outside, two and one on Tyrone. Throne flails at that one, count as even. Even count, one out. Two and two to Cerrone. He fouls that one out of play. Throw and called out on strikes. Jaeger now one out away from the complete game shutout. He's only allowed two hits and he's just been mowing down the lineup. Parks the line drive out to left field and Catch not made in left field. <laughs> Spalding arguing it was the sunglasses that fell off in left field. And they still keep with the call. Spalding is very unhappy, but. So Parks with two hits on the day. Curly can start what you call a two out rally. Runner on first. Pruitt takes a strike. Pruitt takes that freaking ball in the dirt, it's one and one. Pruitt grounds that one to Martin. He fires on the first and Jaeger goes the distance seven innings. No runs, and the Friars fall short, 3 nothing. Hey, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in today. I'm uh, Nick Polinski, joined by Joey Pocari. The Friars fall short, and Spalding takes it 3 nothing in this MIAA matchup. Have a good rest of your evening, everyone.